My name is Rui Fernandes, and I'm going to present the work uh, entitled The Effect of the Treatment in Fatigue Performance of Notched and Unnotched Samples uh, Manufactured by Laser Powder by Fission Under Variable Amplitude Loadings. Um, it's, it's a part of my PhD project, and uh, it was done with the support of my professors from University of Coimbra. So, regarding the process, laser powder bed fusion is a process within additive manufacture that allows the, the production of 3D components uh, by using metallical powders. This is done in a strategy, in a layer by layer strategy um, that enables the, the production of complex shapes that are difficult to achieve uh, using conventional methods. However, the process is uh, associated with some uh, defects as pores and lack of fusion and also uh, residual stresses. Uh, the main uh, producers of this technology uh, recommend to, you to apply a T60 treatment um, and also a stress relief with temperatures in uh, uh, a range of two. 270 degrees and 300 degrees uh, but it's important to note that for that range of uh, temperatures we will uh, have an exothermic peak that is associated with the silicon precipitation so these higher temperatures will have a huge impact in this range of the material uh, because silicon precipitation from the supersaturated matrix will lead to uh, spheroid, spheroidal silicon in the aluminium matrix and also the disappearance of the silicon network. These microstructural transformations will lead to a reduction in the fatigue strain. So the motivation of the work is to, was to the, develop a simple e treatment that can promote uh, an improvement in the fatigue strain. Uh, and the the objective of this work is was to study the effect of the treatment in fatigue performance of not notched and unnotched samples under variable loading amplitudes. Uh, here we have the geometry of unnotched and semicircular notch that were used in this study, and also the process parameters that was uh, that were used to uh, manufacture the samples. Regarding the treatment, uh, it was select a stress relief with a temperature of 250 degrees for two hours, followed by water caching. Regarding the fatigue results, they were done uh, in a 10, uh, 100 kilonewton DARTEC uh, machine under load, uh, under load control and uh, in a previous study, we have done some constant amplitude tests uh, for the unnotched specimens, but I, I will not present it here because they were just used for prediction purposes. Regarding the variable amplitude uh, tests, they, they, they are split um, in three blocks with the same number of cycles, the same uh, maximum stress, but with different stress ratios. Regarding the, the microstructure, uh, we have seen that uh, the melt pools um, boundaries are almost undefinable. Uh, also, um, this, is, this is caused by the thermal expansion and thermal uh, contraction of the material and also uh, from the silicon migration. Um, as well as the dis disappearance of some cellular micro uh, microstructures. Uh, and it, it's also clear that the, the silicon network, it becomes more coarser. So this, these morphological changes uh, had an impact in, in, the, in the decrease of the hardness. For the S-Build uh, series, we have an average value of 165, while for the stress relief, we have a, an average value of 140 which represent a decrease of 30% in terms of uh, hardness. As a consequence of this hardness decrease, also the, the monotonic uh, uh, properties have, uh, has decreased, uh, but the, the ductility has increased. 
regarding the fatigue results when we compare the notch and the the, the unnotched series it was uh, observed a decrease in the fatigue strange uh, due to the stress concentration as expected the the fatigue stress concentration factor was calculated uh, with the peterson equation and when we uh, look closely we can see that uh, um, the fatigue strange has increased uh, 80 percent for uh, 1 million cycles and this is what uh, was verified for the notched and unnotched series for the as built series and the e treated uh, and we can see also that for um, low low uh, cycle fatigue uh, the the behavior be between the the treated and untreated condition they are very very similar uh, by analyzing the residual stresses, we can see that the stress relief, it, it was responsible for a stabilization uh, of the residual stresses. And for a depth of 500 microns, we have uh, almost three times lower value in terms of residual stresses. Uh, in fatigue life predictions, they were calculated using the minor rule uh, and based on the constant amplitude fatigue results um, and applying the Smith Watson Topper uh, criteria to consider the stress effect, the stress ratio effect. And for the unnotched city, we reach a good correlation between the predicted values and this, the experimental ones. However, for the notched ones, the results are not so uh, good because they, they are uh, a bit conservative. Uh, this, is, um, this can be improved and we will uh, try to improve it in, in the, the next step of the work by applying the equivalent strain energy density method. Uh, because we uh, think that the, the, the method that we apply did not consider the plasticity in the notch rule. So, as conclusions, the applied treatment induced a slight microstructural transformation that, uh, that result in a coarser aluminium silicon supersaturated matrix. This microstructural transformation caused a decrease in the hardness and uh, also in the monotonic properties, but increased the ductility and enhanced the fatigue strain. Uh, the residual stress relief and their stabilization were the main mechanisms responsible for improving the fatigue strain. And the method used to predict the fatigue life show, shows good results for the a notched specimens, uh, but uh, not for the notched ones because of the plasticity that was not uh, right uh, account. Uh, in a future work, we will try to improve that and we will also try to do some fracture analysis to try to correlate the defects with the fatigue strain. And that's it. Thank you for your attention. Yeah. Thank you for the nice presentation. And so the paper is open for discussion. Yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, I have a question regarding the residual stresses. Uh, you showed a chart that at the surface we have like similar similar residual stresses for as built as well as well for the stress relief, but when we look at the SN curve, the fatigue performance they are very different. So how do you explain that? Uh... The, th the thing is, uh, the, the residual stresses, um, they, they in the stress relief, they are more homogenized uh, in terms of the, the thickness of the specimen. And uh, this has uh, had the result in a better uh, performance in terms of fatigue. All right. There was another question. Hey, thank you for your, your clear presentation. I have 
Uh, one question for me is surprising. In aluminum alloy, the, the heat treatment increase in the mechanical properties, static and also cyclic. In your case, in this additive manufactured uh, aluminum alloy, this uh, heat treatment decrease these properties. Have you some idea what is the reason or why this this can I just uh, ask you uh, what what is your e treatment was the same okay yeah Yeah, the thing is, uh, with the the the, proce the, pro uh, the process, the laser uh, powder bed fusion process, we obtain a more f a fine uh, microstructure, and uh, with the formation of the silicon fibrous um, network, that is not similar to the cast one, and uh, when we apply the heat treatment, we will uh, rearrange the microstructure. And uh, we will lose some. Um, the, the as the the silicon network becomes coarser, the the mechanical properties are uh, they they reduce with the heat treatment. And with the cast alloys, uh, with the cast alloy, it's kind of different because uh, um, I think that uh, silicon uh, precipitates. Uh, from the, the the matrix, which will increase the 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 mechanical properties, but it it's not the same for the additive uh, the, the laser powder bed fusion one. It's it's different. Yeah, we we uh, it's it's a good, it's a good question, and we as a, a lot of debate uh, around it. But uh, we think that the 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 heat, the, the changes that we treatment uh, do in the microstructure of the laser powder bed fusion one, uh, it's it's different from the the cast alloy. So time for a fast last question at the back. It's another question. Did you observe any increase in porosity after the heat treatment? Because in aluminum alloys for additive manufacture that um, occurs, at least to my knowledge, did you? Uh, observe something from, like this from uh, this work i did not uh, do the porosity analysis but uh, based on the constant uh, amplitude work that we did before uh, we didn't see uh, an an increase in the porosity after after the treatment okay thank you thank you again for your work thank you.